forests are really important to people in New Hampshire. It's part of our landscape, it's part of our characters and our community. And when we think about removing our forests, that means that there's jobs that go with them. So my name is Elizabeth Burakowski. I am a research assistant professor at the University of New Hampshire. And I study snow and forests and deforestation and how they all interact. I like to call this my Ghostbusters jetpack. <laughs> uh, so it holds the, the spectrometer. When we have a deforested landscape, like what we're standing in here in the middle of the field, a lot of the sun's energy is gonna get reflected right up back out to space. And that makes the surface a lot cooler. If you compare it to a forest, which is a lot darker, that's gonna absorb a lot more of the sun's energy. And that heat helps increase the Earth's temperature. When the fiber optic is pointed up towards the sky, we're measuring how much of the sun's energy is reaching the Earth. And then when we flip it over, we can measure how much of the sun's energy is getting reflected by the surface of the Earth. Get our reflected value. And when you take the ratio of those two, you have what's called albedo, or a measure of reflectivity. It, it always amazes me when we get to the top of the forest canopy. We're actually looking at several thousand homes in this view, but we can't see any of them. So all of these trees put together create a canopy or a layer above the forest floor. I climbed the tower over there several times throughout the winter season to see how albedo changes with snow and snow depth. And one thing we can notice even with our own eyes is that the canopy is a lot darker than the open field was. And we see this even more so once it stops snowing and that darker forest is absorbing more of the sun's energy. When it does that, it's going to re-radiate that sun's energy as heat and serve to warm the landscape. So in this corner here, we have some of the, the oldest graves. You can see a lot of these are from the early 1800s. So what's great about having these here is that it also tells us about when these stone walls were created, so early 1800s. What we found is that when we had a deforested landscape in New Hampshire, it was probably a couple degrees cooler in wintertime compared to what it is today, now that all the forests have regrown. So when people started settling in the New England region, they really started clearing the landscape of its trees, and they had many reasons to do this. They were harvesting wood to heat their homes, they were clearing pasture for their herds of sheep and cows, and they were building great cities like Boston and New York. We know that there used to be pastures here, one, because we have some photographs of it, and two, because we have these stone walls throughout the landscape. And anytime you see one in the middle of the forest, you know that the forest didn't always used to be there. When we know where the stone walls are and where the deforestation was taking place, we can then simulate what happened with climate based on those mapped areas. Forests have so many uses for people in New Hampshire. The tourism industry is one gigantic reason why we have a lot of forests in the region. We also harvest our forests for wood for use as lumber. We use it in paper mills. So the warming that we see from the regrowth of our forests is separate from the warming that we see from what's known as climate change, which is the release of car uh, carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. The work that I do is helping to understand what it means when we deforest a landscape today. Uh, we don't want to repeat the mistakes that we've made in the past, but we want to make sure that we're managing our landscapes in a way that both we as a community and society gain benefits from our forest resources, but also help to mitigate what's going on on the surface in terms of climate. We don't want to see vast changes in climate due to our actions on the landscape.